Radio Live, RTC Channel 5, audio and video live, RTC Channel 4. Scott's in the studio. Scott, where else are we streaming this morning? Hey, we're on your website. On the website? RTC website. Both websites, RTC4 or WROIFM.com. Oh, man, you are an amazing person. Do you know that? <laughs> I, I can understand why. And of course, if you have a smartphone or an Android device, you can download a TuneIn radio app, something similar. Take us wherever you're going, which today is the First Federal Savings Bank. And you'll say good morning to the president, Evan Gottschalk. Good morning, Evan. Good morning, Tom. Thank you for being here today. Uh, it's great to be here today. We're going to kick off the winter session, we like to call it. Okay. We accomplished more than Congress usually does, though, in their <laughs> sessions. So. Big things ahead, Probably so. of course. We survived the big, long holiday weekend. Well, it's still kind of one big, long holiday time period frame weekend, Boy. whatever. You know, we're Catch still, your Z's when you can. This we're is, still, it's still going hot and heavy, aren't we? This is tough. We got right. kind of a, a long... Well, then we got the uh, New Year's weekend. Right, coming right up. Coming right up tomorrow, New Year's Eve. Right. I turned 37. Oh, happy you know birthday. What, you know what hit me this week? What's that? I'm 13 years from 50. Yes, you are. That's, That's correct. when my uncle told me years ago, that's when stuff starts happening. <laughs> <laughs> Love those uncles. Yeah, right? thanks, thanks for that. <laughs> Words of wisdom right there. Right there. Yeah, those, the, all that van time going up to Canada fishing, I got a lot of wisdom uh, there <laughs> and back. So <laughs> some of it I use and some I tried to forget. But. Quick note about the bank, you'll be open Saturday? Yes, we will, uh, till noon, Okay. just as normal. And how about Monday? We're not open Monday. Okay. Um, we're t the second is the national holiday. Right. Federal Reserve's closed, so we're going to close as well. Okay. Well, we got a big show this morning. Uh, we have uh, another first federal family member here this morning that we'll be talking to, and that's Jamie Bales. He's our new vice president of commercial lending. Excellent. So we'll speak with him in just a bit. Um, hey, you may have seen the city of Rochester's accepting bids for the recycling program. They are. So I'm excited that that's going to hopefully continue tough to get a bid on that probably in the winter don't you think yeah it's a tough time for it but it's uh, it's very time consuming so yeah. somebody has to look at it from that perspective i think i think so too so i'm hoping that turns out well because that's a great program for um the city of rochester i heard santa's sleigh and reindeer are free too so that might help for there collection those elves need a job too those little fingers they, they do. really sort well yeah, they do yeah, yeah so hopefully do. someone reached out to them a little bit Okay, good trivia question. We're looking at the new year, of course. So what year was the first ever New Year's Eve ball drop in Times Square? Do I have a choice? Yeah. Good. We've lined up four <laughs> excellent choices for you this morning. Uh, a is 1940. Seems like a long time ago. B is 1925. That's even longer ago. Yeah. C is 1915. Or D is 1907. All right. We'll consider that as we go through the program. Scott will know. You think? Yeah, he he knows the answer to all the trivia questions. Yeah, he's also yeah. in the back room with the computer. Well, I know. So, you know he's, he's Googling mm -hmm. back there. Okay. Right. All right. Well, we'll see if he's. <laughs> we'll see if he can find that one out there in the information superhighway. I haven't heard that word for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Internet works better now. Okay. Sports news. Um, boy, Purdue University started off the Big Ten season well. Yeah, they did. They beat Iowa 89-67. Yeah, I was always decisively. Yeah, and I was always kind of one of those tough teams to right. beat. You know, you never know what you're going to get. Very physical. Very physical. So that was a that's a big win. They play again on Sunday against Minnesota. Minnesota is pretty decent too. They're 12 and 2. So boy, it's going to be kind of one of those black and blue Big 10 seasons It probably think, Tom? is, yeah. I think so too. Scott came back out. Are you mentioning IU, too? <laughs> okay, he's looking at me now. <laughs> okay, number one, I never looked up on Google. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> That's what he was, I thought he was staring at me to move on. Right. <laughs> swim team, swim team. Yeah, swim team. Um, yes, IU lost their opener to the tough Nebraska Cornhuskers. Yeah, who were 15-point underdogs, by the way. Right, Not that you. I need to say that. Yeah. And they broke their winning streak at Assembly Hall that uh, you had going. Um, so not not a good start. They did not look good. It's early yet, though, right? All. It is early. Right. But that Big Ten title is going to get out of hand quick, I think. Right. There's a lot going on there. And then, of course, IU's playing Louisville tomorrow. 
at 12:30 on CBS, and that's in Indianapolis, kind of a neutral site. So Louisville's number six. They're yeah, 11 be a fun and two. Game. Should be. All right, uh, Notre Dame. There's a lot of good Indiana teams again right. this year. Right. Love that. Notre Dame's number 24. They're 11 and two. Uh, they beat uh, a school I've never heard of, St. Peter's. I'm not sure if that was the parochial school or what yeah, that was. I'm but not sure. They beat them 63-55, so, and that was in South Bend. Now they go to Pittsburgh tomorrow. Pittsburgh's 11-2. and two. Notre Dame women got beat last night. Did they? North Did Carolina they? State. Ooh. Upset. That's not good. No. I think they've got one more road game before they come finally back to South Bend. Well, let's hope they make it back in one piece. Right. Uh, they've always got a lot riding uh, with the t- type of talent they have they up do. there. And then, of course, uh, Butler's number 13 in the country. They're 11-1, and one, and they're going to St. John's Thursday night. They lost last night to St. John's. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Yeah. Well, that's not good. So they're 11-2. and two. They're right. going to go to Providence on Sunday, who's 10-3 and three right now. So um, Purdue, thankfully, holding strong there for the state of Indiana. IU also played in a bowl game this week. They played number 19, Utah. Utah's a pretty good team. Played them well. Actually played them well. It was, it was a tough game. Yeah. It was kind of fun to watch. Ended really late. Foster Farms Bowl. It was 26-24 with Utah getting the win. IU kind of had a little time to try to go down and get a field goal and didn't do much with it. Utah's pass rush was really something else in that game. So they didn't get much time to throw the ball. Um, RHS girls basketball, there was the Rochester Glass Holiday Classic yesterday. And they played a couple of really tough teams. They did. Good experience for uh, the Zebras. Uh, the first game was Elkhart Memorial with a final at 31-46. to 46. Um, Rochester lost that one. And then they played Mishawaka Marion, and that one was 37-72. Tough to play those two in the same day, wouldn't you think? Yeah, I remember, too, that uh, Kennedy Musselman was out for those two contests, and she's one of their leading scorers and rebounders. So that may have made a slight difference in it. I'm sure that did. They're 8-8 eight and eight now in the season, and uh, they play uh, Jamie's hometown, North Judson, on the third <laughs> next week. So that'll be a good game. Uh, the boys' basketball lost to Lewis Cass on Tuesday night, 80-52. to 52. Um, Ben Perez was the leading scorer for the Zebras with that one with 14 points. Cass is good year in and year out. Every year. And uh, Zebras are now 0-7, and, and they play uh, next Friday at Whitco. And RHS Swimming. Doing and well. Had some good swimmers oh, man, here the last well. few years. Excellent, excellent swimming. A lot of records have been set in the last few years. Uh, good program going on there. Um, they're playing um, upcoming Wednesday in a dual meet with Warsaw and Tippy Valley. Okay. And that'll be at Warsaw High School. Might be something fun to go to. Um, Rochester High School Wrestling got sixth place out of 17 teams. And that was our own John McKee Memorial Invitational last Friday. Um, they wrestled the first round in the Mishwaka Al Smith Invitational yesterday. And round two is going to be today. Always have a good wrestling program under Clint Guard. Uh, sixth out of 17 is really good. He's good at developing wrestlers. Absolutely. They started right at kindergarten, I believe. They do. Great club Still pretty program. young and worked their way through it. Uh, Colts 7-8. and eight. They're going to finish the season uh, hosting the Jaguars. Oh, um. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a rumor that uh, Tom Coughlin was going to be uh, <laughs> Coughlin was going to be interviewing for the Jaguars job. <laughs> he might be. Uh, yeah, he was there when they started, so that would be an interesting thing. What do we thing. have? We have Jacksonville open, Los Angeles is open, and uh, Buffalo. Buffalo, yeah. The third one that's Rex open. Ryan Rex Ryan just got fired this week, so I'm sure there'll be a couple others coming. I don't know if, what the Bears are going to do. Well, uh, John Fox is there. He'll stay another. John Fox good coach. What about Pagano? So. Yeah. That's a question. What mark. do you think? You think he'll be there? Uh, no, I think I he's think he gone. will. Do you? Yeah, I, I think the, do. I think they're ready to move on. Okay, we'll see what happens. Uh, catch us next week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it depends on how they we, play. We may know more after Sunday afternoon. <laughs> right? The Jaguars come tough. <laughs> that could be a deciding factor. That's right. Uh, the Bears. They're three and twelve. John okay. Fox is a good coach. Um, they're going to Minnesota, who's seven and eight, to finish off the season. Hey Tanner, is Pagano back? Okay, there you go. See, Tom, you're outnumbered yeah, I now. am. I'm outvoted already. You need a good win uh, Sunday. Uh, Vikings are five-and-a-half-point favorites there. The Colts are favored four-and-a-half points on Sunday. And uh, the Bears have – they're they're 
on pace for a record this Sunday. <laughs> what record might That's that be? Not, not for wins. Um, their fifth round pick out of IU, Scott, um, Jordan Howard, the running back, he uh, he may become set the Bears rookie rushing record, which is... Uh, you know, think about some of the rushers from the yeah. Bears, the running backs. That's yeah. an impressive record to have. Well, Peyton that's the Sayers. Yeah. 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 And that's really exciting when you're 3 and 12. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> he only needs 61 yards to go, and he'll get uh, he, he, the record is 1,238 yards. Okay. So he's got a good chance to fit it because he's, he's gone over 70 yards the last seven games. You know who the current record holder is? I do not. Gail Sayers. Great guess. No. No. Anybody? Peyton. Matt Forte. Oh, Forte. Okay. The, pre- the previous lead horse okay. there who's on the New York Jets. Yeah, he's playing for the Jets now. So I, I would have missed that one. I couldn't. I was a little surprised by that, given the uh, the lineup there. Even Red Grange was really good back in the day. That's right. Okay. Upcoming local events. Um, Swearing-in ceremony for our newly elected Fulton County office holders is tonight, 6 p.m. at the courthouse get started for a new government year and then the public library will be showing the movie florence foster jenkins on thursday january 5th and of course that's a free uh, no charge movie so that might be something fun to do actually i saw that movie it's a good movie is it yeah Who, what's it about i don't even meryl streep uh, has oh. one of the has one of the lead roles that's all you that, have to say in, right in there movie. she was a uh, she was a singer who was actually a non-singer it's a long story. Yeah, I don't understand. Yeah. Okay, guess we need to see it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> She's always great, so that that's a good little tid, tidbit. Okay, some birthdays. LeBron James turns 32 today. He seems older than that because he's been around <laughs> since I remember. <laughs> you know, ever since he was uh, in was high school. Yeah. Was he 18 when he went to the NBA? I yep. think so. Yeah. So he's had, of course, a really long career right. already. Right. Let's hope his body holds out. He could hold every record in the books. Different player. He had a quote here recently that I'm a different player than Michael Jordan. Totally different game, which I think is probably I think it's true. true too. But he, of course, he always got that next Michael Jordan label when he was younger. Right. Much bigger guy. And then Tiger Woods. You know how old he is? Uh, I do not. Forty one. Mm. He got old quick. <laughs> That's all I can say about that. <laughs> but he tried late this year to uh, make a comeback. I don't think it was really too successful, but he did play in a tournament. So. He did. Yeah. And I, it may have been, I think he started off a little better than I expected. Yeah. I don't remember how yeah, first finished. two rounds he played pretty well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. A uh, little bank note here. On this day in 1861, okay. um, U.S. banks stopped pay- making payments in gold. We just started using currency. Okay. That sounds like that was, uh, I'm not a good historian, but that sounds like that was in Civil War time. Civil we might War have been time holding wouldn't. a little tighter on right. some of those reserves with uh, the nation kind of crumbling around. Okay, and on this day in 1980 was the last performance on NBC of The Wonderful World of Disney, which had a great run. That was a fun show to watch. Um, we got a good milestone this week. Argus senior guard Courtney Dunlap won the Indiana Basketball Coaches Association State Player of the Week. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, uh, man, uh, 25 points, six boards, five assists, four steals, and they beat number one Marquette Catholic um, on December 20th. So that's great. That's a really cool honor for a a, uh, small school around here. Okay, flowers this week. Fulton County Promise. It received a shot from the chamber. And Top Motorsports received the Double I Award from the Fulton County Chamber. So those are both uh, organizations. The Promise is um, an organization that's working to promote college savings um, in our local youth in the in the, all the county schools. Excellent. So great organization there. And Top Motorsports. Um, there was just a, a neat little article in the paper about what they're doing too. So growing rapidly, actually. Very rapidly, and uh, we're going to have them on next week. Okay, good. So that'll be it kind of fun to learn a little bit more in depth about what they're doing okay the dow jones industrial average has been trying like heck to get to twenty thousand, and uh, they're not there yet they're 180 points away will they get there i no i don't think so i i think there's a psychology there everyone's a little nervous about getting there (laughs) so i think they hang back and and see what 17 has to offer for for it but i i kind of a week or two ago i thought they would have been there right 
with all the momentum. Well, that was the t- yeah, that was the time the momentum was really really peaking. So we'll see. That'll be something fun to look at today. Okay, um, this this doesn't happen very often. GNC, you know the nutrition yeah. stores. It's based out of Pittsburgh, but they're shuttering all 4,464 stores temporarily. Wow. So, that, so they can update um, pricing strategy. It sounds sounds like a drastic sounds thing eerie, to do. Sounds eerie, doesn't it? Yeah. So um, apparently they're going to all open up again, maybe with um, different displays and different pricing. But a strange thing. You don't hear about something like that happening very often. And then Honda... Boy, it's been a, a crazy last 18 months for, for the car companies. Um, Honda announced it's going to recall nearly 650,000 Odyssey minivans, um, model years 2011 to 16, because the second row seats may not lock in the event of a crash. So if you have one of those, you might just uh, call your local dealership and double check on some of that. Usually you get something in the mail eventually, but you might want to get on that um, for a safety concern. Okay, <clears throat> thinking about First Federal this morning. We're open to 5 today, and of course, till noon tomorrow on New Year's Eve. We will not be open on Monday, January 2nd, but we will open back up on the 3rd okay. for business. So come in and see us. Um, we got a lot of um, online mobile options, but we still love seeing everybody. So um, we always want to be inviting anyone in to come talk to us, and, and um, we love listening, helping, supporting our local communities. Our ATM is always open, so if you need something after hours or on Sundays or um, later in the day on Saturdays, you can deposit at our ATM or withdraw cash or make a transfer. You can also bank with us online anytime, uh, day or night, and with our mobile app, too. Very convenient. Very convenient. We are the local mortgage loan specialists. And we do service our own loans. So you you start a loan with us, and you're going to finish it with us. Um, we love that process. We love being there with you every step of the way. And that's what we offer. That's what we've been doing for a long time. We specialize in that. All right. <clears throat> We're closing the book on First Federal's 50th anniversary year today, Tom. I don't know if you knew that or not. I did. We had a really fun year. Um, our goal this year was to highlight an organization each month. You did a lot of good for the community. We enjoyed doing that. Right. And, uh, you know, you think about that. We don't want to take credit for that. We've be, be had a lot of good done to us over the years in 50 years. So it, it's our way of just saying thank you and continuing the partnerships that we have here locally. Um, in January of this past year, we highlighted the United Ministries Outreach Program, uh, which is great supporting um, needs in the community as needed. Um, so that's a great organization that could always use funds to help those out, those people out in our communities. Uh, in February, we did the Fulton County Community Foundation. They usually have, I think you mentioned it earlier, Tom, when we were talking, they have their Valentine's Day promotion mm-hmm. with RTC and WRY. And uh, we spo- helped um, donate to that cause in February. In March, it was the Retired Senior Volunteer Program, or we usually call, call it RSVP, which is a great group uh, based out of the um, uh, Community Services Building. And we also highlighted the Fulton County Council on Aging as uh, based out of the same building. Great, two great organizations um, serving those folks in town, uh, 55 or older. In April, we highlighted the Fulton County Animal Adoption and Education Center and they're on a capital project right now. Mm-hmm. Um, they had a great piece in the, the Sentinel here a little while back. In May, we, we highlighted the Habitat for Humanity, and they've built a lot of houses in our community over the last um, several years. In June, it was Relay for Life. In July, it was Pack a Backpack Program. And August, our Compassionate Healthcare Clinic. In September, it was Feed My Starving Children Mobile Pack. That was a really fun event. And October, uh, we helped provide trees for the Woodlawn Hospital walking path. It gets a lot of use. And November was the Christmas Baskets. Excellent. Great organization. And uh, December, this this month, it was Salvation Army. Very good. So those are some some key groups that we've had relationships with. And, uh, of course, along the way, United Way 
with their campaign here late in the year. Of course, we can't wait to see what you're going to do for your 51st year. That's right. There's a, there's a lot of precedent now. Uh, announcement to come, Tom. Thank okay. You. <laughs> uh, of course, uh, for our mortgage services, borrowers need to meet underwriting guidelines. Um, a delivery fee might be applicable to the mortgage loan. We are FDIC insured and an equal housing lender. And our NMLS number is 399927. Okay. Well, we are pleased to be joined by Jamie Bales, First Federal's Vice President of Commercial Lending. Um, we have done very little commercial lending over the years, Tom. And um, one thing we were looking at earlier uh, in 2016, we wanted to um, find someone that could help us get started with a commercial lending program that could help out our local communities. And uh, we found that person in Jamie Bales. So welcome, Jamie. Hey, good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for having me. Evan promised a breakfast buffet, but I don't see one around here well, quite yet. So. it's not here. He'll, yeah. he'll yeah. take you to that yeah. after after the program. And, of course, it's kind of contingent on how well you do. Uh, yeah. It's, okay. You know, it's you know. A, no, no pressure. <laughs> yeah. It's a performance-based buffet. Right. No, no but, uh, yeah, glad to be here and uh, glad to be with the first, you know, federal savings team. Um, you know, like Evan and Dick have promoted in the past, it's been, you know, a lot about service and um, being there from application to close and, you know, we just want to transition that to the commercial side, um, you know, with the business lending that, you know, we know some other banks are involved with. We want to get in that uh, process, too, and kind of understand the needs of the businesses first, um, you know, make sure it's a good fit, and then um, also be there, you know, to serve them uh, like we have on their mortgage side. So just real happy to be here and um, think it's going to be a good fit. Yeah, when as we were looking at our 50th year coming up, um, one thing that was really speaking to us is we've really enjoyed being community partners for residents in our communities, our neighbors, our friends, our families, with the biggest financial decision of their life on a personal level, which is their home mortgage. That's been a, a role that we've fit into really well the last 50 years, have enjoyed, and we do a great job at it. And that will never go away. That will never go away. Um, we have laser focus on that business, and uh, we just felt like we were in a position now to have that same type of relationship with our local businesses. And we wanna be impactful in our community in that same way. So that that is what we've been working on with Jamie. Uh, Jamie's been working on this year and uh, we're looking at launching that pretty soon. Yeah, absolutely. And we have um, <clears throat> quite a variety of products to offer. Um, you know, we're looking over the years, I've been just talking with Dick and Evan, you know, there's been some needs in the community for, you know, real estate, uh, equipment loans, and also lines of credit. And we want to open that up uh, here to start this uh, next year and uh, pretty excited about it. You know, there's a lot of good, um, you know, meetings I've already had with some business owners in the area. Uh, of course, we serve uh, five other offices uh, from Bremen, Plymouth, Winnemac, Elkhart, and Mishawaka. So uh, we plan on being very active in those areas. Um, if there's questions or any, um, you know, thing that, you know, a business owner might need, you know, um, we have... You know, lots of way to get get a hold of us. Uh, obviously, we're on you know Facebook. We're streaming live. I was told, um, <laughs> and also you know we're here at the offices you know most of the time, but we're out and about. You can uh, always reach us by phone. Um, our main points of contact for the commercial office are uh, is five seven four two two three one seven one six, or just stop by and then uh, ask about it, and we can. Uh, be happy to sit down and, and meet with you. So you're headquartered in Rochester, but yet you you travel to the other branches as well. Yeah, that's right, Tom. Yeah, so we'll be here most of the time in Rochester, but you know we're very mobile. Um, you know, I've been out with Evan, beating the streets a little bit already. Sure. Um, but yeah, we've already you know up, up in Elkhart, Mishawak, and those um, little more urban areas. But all, of course, down here, and we're here to you know meet needs of all the business owners. You know, from the farmers uh, to the uh, mom and pop shops here locally, or even you know if you're in the industrial park, you know we're uh, open to listen and see what your needs are and then, um, you know, try and fit you in the best product, uh, you know, we have. We have a lot of different, you know, competitive rates, um, terms uh, available. Uh, we meet twice a week from a loan committee and we like to sit down and, and see what's going on in the areas. Um, so we're able to give you a fast response uh, to some of these questions you might have, uh, maybe if I don't have it right away. Can you do things maybe that other people that loan to commercial entities can't do? Not necessarily, okay. no. I mean, if you're a commercial bank, you're a commercial bank. Uh, I think what has separated us in the past maybe from other community banks is our service. Uh, we really strive on that. You know, we want to be here as uh, 
not just you know giving you a loan, but also being you know a partner uh, with you, a financial partner, and sit down and you know um, discuss with you know what your options are, and not just give you the first product that might come to mind. So it's a process. It's a uh, you know it's a discussion we like to have, and making sure we understand um, the, your needs first. I think what we strive for um, is the relationship, and uh, we've done that so well in uh, in our business up to this point. Um, that's what you won't find uh, with some of the other regional national banks, especially, is, um, you know, they're striving for numbers. They're looking at reports and, and kind of generating their um, techniques and conversations from that standpoint. For us, it's about the relationship. Um, we live next to you. We probably go to church with you. We shop at Kroger's with you. Um, so we a relationship is what we're looking for. And uh, the benefit of that for a business owner is... You know, all ships rise and fall with the tide, and we're there with you every step of the way through good and bad. Um, and I think that's something that we offer that not everybody can offer. I'm not sure I get a lot of detail here, but but, but specifically, let's say a business owner wants to talk with you about this. What type of information are you looking for? Well, it's pretty similar to the mortgage process, Tom. Okay. You know, we're... we're um you know, going to have an application uh, as far as, you know, getting tax returns, uh, financial statements, um, where it might vary a little bit as we're looking at cash flows. You know, what's your business plan? What What is um, this investment you're making going to do for your business? So we're going to look into that a little bit and then, um, you know, try and understand, you know, how you're going to repay that. So um, you know, it's real important to see what not only you've done in the past, but also see kind of where that road's going to take you with this new investment. Okay, excellent. Excellent. So, um, Jamie gave you a phone number. That's his number. Um, he's leading our commercial program, our small business program, and that can be for any any of the counties around. Um, he's willing to travel um, and making himself available, and that was 574-223-1716. Um, so, we're very excited about this, something we've been working on for quite a while to uh, make sure that we can offer that great service uh, to that can kind of complement what we're doing with our mortgage business. Last question, Jimmy. You're looking uh, for, uh, of course, uh, there are existing businesses that might want your services, but how about a new startup business? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. No, if um, <clears throat> you're interested in starting up a business or any sort of, um, you know, building or or whatever it is, um, yeah, just we'll go over your business okay. plan. We'll sit down with you, and it's the same application process. Uh, we'll have to do more of a pro forma base. Uh, but we have other avenues, too. Um, whether it's our bank, we can also work with the uh, SBA, Small Business Administration, and uh, help you get started. So if you're a good credit uh, in the past, uh, we tend to think you'll be a good credit in the future. So uh, it all kind of depends on some of that, too. Excellent. Well, thanks, Jamie, for joining us. Yeah. Uh, we're really happy to have you in the First Federal family. And uh, we're really excited to make a, a good impact in the business community and our in our local um, locations. So something that uh, is really exciting for a developing community. All right, <clears throat> let's move on to our trivia answer. Uh, what year was the first ever New Year's Eve ball drop in Times Square? I think Barron went back and found it, so I know what it is. But did you know that the original design was made from wood and iron and lit 100 incandescent light bulbs? No, I didn't. Yeah, okay. I, I knew that. Right. <laughs> and of course, the that. current ball is LED lighting. It's probably a lot lighter than the first one. Right. They might have had a considerable hoist for that first one to get that thing <laughs> off the ground. 1907s when they put that together. So, uh, Welcome to 1908. That's great. All right. Words of wisdom this morning. The discipline of the writer is to learn to be still and listen to what his subject has to tell him. Well said. That was Rachel Carson, a United States biologist. Evan Gottschalk, thank you very much. Nice to have you here. Jamie, thank you for Thanks, coming Tom. in. Thank you.